You know, maybe some monkey, maybe some huskar as well. Yeah. Doesn't this just scream me pick Mars for a bar? For offlane? It's yeah. nothing flashy, but... Yeah, it's not banned as well. Yeah, yeah. just facilitates the fight. Two range cores for nouns. You can buy yours, you buy well. pipe. Yeah, again, nothing crazy, but... There's a lot of options for him, I mean, though. There, there's like a centaur option as well, but out of all the heroes, I... I agree with T. Mars is maybe his most comfortable one to mm -hmm. play on. I'd say Underlord's pretty comfortable for him as well. I think the difference between Mars and Centaur will be, do you want Centaur to have blade mail mm. to run into the Luna early, if Luna wants to be slightly active? Mm -hmm. And if you don't care about that and you want the bigger team fight, you go for Mars because you can buy pipe and then you'll enable that. So it just really depends how they want to approach the bigger oh. picture. And his timber is also still in the pool. Maybe not that good with the clockwork in the pool, but I figured since it's a Mar, I have to throw sure, it out there. Yeah, no, no, fair play. I think there's uh, three options and mm -hmm. maybe Falcons go for option four, but I think even Mars the Underlord is one, like, they're all kind of good. Yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of options for Mar. So Falcons really has the, the luxury of just focusing on on trying to secure the lane for the Earth Spirit. Go crazy. Oh, the They'll end up going for the back. Bristleback. Who we've seen banned out in basically every single game. I'll be honest, today. I kind of forgot to double check the band. I just blindly assumed it was there to some degree, but yeah, first of all, uh, Aura Buyer. Some people try to get caught from the offlane, but Let's in this game, please just buy Pipe Crimson. That's pretty much your job mm -hmm. in the offlane. Basically. Do you think it's not rocket time with the SF? Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. Pretty good. All right, copy though, boss. You see your mid lane earth for it. Super active on the map, can mm -hmm. buy a vessel. Mm -hmm. Is it What's he gonna go for, for them? Mm -hmm. It could be. They got 20 seconds to solve their puzzle. So what th what are they lacking? You guys, you guys are saying that the first four are very telegraphed? Yeah, I, would I would just like something flashy, something chaotic. And, uh, Ooh, chaotic? <laughs> Huskar's chaotic, uh, no? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we did mention the Huskar a little bit earlier. And uh, Team Falcons, they didn't ban it out. Look, the, the only reason, I feel like every game I'm uh, paneling right now, if there's watch a out for the Huskar. Hit, yeah, yeah. I'm saying watch out for Huskar, not only because we've seen it a few times here, but because it's literally in every single high tier mm -hmm. pub. Like, it's played so much right now. And he's winning most of the games. This matchup looks pretty fun, though, because Ursper at least has repositioning, right? You can kick the Huskar, so if you try to step up, he can also then set up for the hoodwink to TP in. So I think in all the matchups of like melee hero versus Huskar, there's a world in which Marine can outplay Copy if Crit's also willing to sacrifice his offlane to come to mid. But yeah, I think, of course, Huskar v melee hero is good. Tempo and timing for nouns feels pretty nice. You play Vintage and Huskar together. I think, of course, scaling wise, I'm leaning maybe Falcons. But yeah, fair play. You go for Huskar, but be careful because Huskar. It can fall flat very quickly if uh, Maureen's yeah. find the entries. I asked for something flashy, for you something did. that can uh, bring a lot of chaos in teamfights, get in behind. They just double down on this bland stuff, like they have no spices. Huskar is like, bland? It is in a way that they're one just world. going to run at them, right? Like take one objective well. after another off of a good laning stage. That's the, I think, the general idea. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna find out what's gonna happen. I did wonder, and I need to ask, Yesterday, as we said, for nouns, wasn't great. Is this looking like a faster game for them to play? Like, can they just sit back and chill, or do they actually have to do things? It would be illegal if they farmed with this lineup. If they're here with, like, less than five kills at 30 minutes, then they got to call up, ring ring, get a coach in. They need something. They, lo they lost their coach at TI. They have to be aggressive with these heroes, Shiva. I beg. Look, at they got up. Got they got to be aggressive. I hope Coach Double A agrees with that. Let's check in with him with Slacks. Hello, yes, I am here with Coach Double A, indeed. Coach Double A, uh, quite disgusting behavior with that last pick Huskar, per the usual. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a complicated question. Do you think that they knew that you were going to do that, or do you believe that you tricked them? No, I, I think that was definitely one of the heroes. We were definitely choosing between Shaker and Huskar, and I got rid of the Shaker, which I think probably would have been a more balanced hero. I think Huskar is definitely putting more eggs in one basket, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, I think the lane is good. I know that he's probably going to do the shenanigans of pulling two plays behind the tier one to kind of counteract. But I mean, 
if he has good early game rotations, then he'll kind of remedy the fact. But it is a Huskar favored lane, and we do have last pick, and we do like giving Copy the choice of what he wants. And he wanted Huskar. All right, well, that sounds pretty good. Now, talk to me about banning against Team Falcons. I mean, a pretty tough yeah. team to ban against. Uh, they're always going to get something, right? But what do you guys prioritize? Yeah, that's hard. So they have, like, a lot of flex heroes that, I mean, Bristol's one of them that ended up making it through. But we got rid of Pango. We got rid of, I think it was Nature's Prophet and Sand King at the start. You're going to get something. They're going to get something. Because in my, in my eyes, like, you have to, something makes it past. In, our, in this case, we gave them Naga Siren, which we will see i think we have decent enough heroes against it i also think of all the things that could have possibly given us headaches i think the flex heroes actually give us more headaches in the draft than something as established as a naga so that was the the risk we had to take absolutely well usually i meme out you know the coaches and torture them but honestly thank you for the informative interview that was really great man i appreciate you. your time and i appreciate that this great game is going to get started so let's throw it over to our casters that's right. Slacks, an informative interview. Always love those ones. The panel was saying that it was a boring draft overall. Huskar boring. My God. But I think that it was an American draft. It was right, right <laughs> on point. Ready to go okay. for it. <laughs> that is a very, that's a very interesting word to use for this draft. <laughs> what what makes it American to you? They're just running at you, you okay, know. Okay, I thought it was no that nouns frills, picked no it, and nothing. it could have been literally any heroes. <laughs> but okay, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, you you called the Huskar. You said that Everybody, was what yeah. Coffee was going to play here. I was looking at a potential tinker. Uh, you get I I don't want to call it your wish necessarily, but you get your prediction here. Um, obviously, both heroes are work drastically differently. You know what? You heard, you heard in the coach interview, Slacks had the angle that Huskar is a disgusting last pick. You, if somebody deserves to have it done to them, it has to be Malreen and Amar, right? Yeah. These guys, I think, are both level 30 Huskars. <laughs> they have done it to countless poor innocent people in their pub games and in pro games, too. Which should also mean that uh, Malreen knows the best counter. Right. Yes. And that's what I'm interested in seeing here, how he plays the Earth Spirit. So Double uh, A was pointing out that Malreen will probably try to pull waves, and that's exactly what's happening here. He's bringing it all the... Oh, he's really taking it for a walk. Huh? This is... We're uh, going bottom. Yeah, tipping Copy, who's trying to connect, but is actually not managing, and now Copy will have to run it back. This is awkward. A very strange one. Yeah, maybe a little bit of inexperience here on Copy's part because now he walked so far down that the lanes will connect here and he's going to get double waved. And Malreen will, as a result here, get pretty much full experience because he gets his own wave connected here as well. I feel like every time we cast Huskar, we're talking about something else than Dota, but... You know, it's new Dota. Problems require solutions. Skitter is dead. Other solution. Lelis brought down. Gunner ready to throw out some more of these soul assumptions. So the lanes, so far, so good. I mean, as much as there were some tips there, Maureen did not get really any of that other wave. So you're still 13 and 7 right now on copy and looking like it might be a bit more um this is a tough one he's having to use the the kicks continuously to try and just get last hits and it's not easy um this is a good score line for earth spirit though actually in my opinion yeah uh again it's one of those matchups you go into it you know you're gonna lose there's yes. absolutely no way at this level that huskar doesn't stomp this lane so it's a matter of how much can melt Okay, Whoa. he's ganking bottom level three with a TP. I mean, yep. he's gotta get something here. Oh, maybe a chance to snowball. No, it's on cooldown. So that is a way to make the lane not matter. Just go other places. Yeah. I can't say with confidence that this was worth it, actually. Cause yeah, okay, he's just gonna live here. Uh, All right. Geez. Well, I did say these kind of problems require creative solutions. This one was not on my card. Uh, just start trialing with your mid. He is He's starting to leave now. I mean, okay, now at this point, the mid lane is uninhabitable, more or less, right? Like yes. You, you're, you're committed now to doing something else. We'll see what Copy does, if he just wants to hold the lane or if he actually wants to try to force Malreen to come back by pushing the tower. But Malreen is just... <laughs> what, what is he doing, dude? This has to work. I mean, he, it's it working. Will. He kicks back Gunner throws out another soul assumption but the tri lane bottom 
Marine tips him, okay? Cool. It's snaking getting the kills, though. Yeah. So, I mean, it's nice that the kills just happen in general, and they do bring Skitter into the game this way against a very tough lane. But, crit okay, comes crit's mid. gonna lane mid as Hoodwink. Amar can solo top They roll bristle. back Gunner yet again. Snowball save, it's onto a creep. Needs to get out on Gunner. Oh, they missed the raise! But it might not matter. There's too much damage here. And Gunner is going to die. So Maureen says, if my lane is ruined, I'm going to ruin your lane too. Coming into mid, <laughs> finding Lelis. I mean, hey, if it's good, it's good. It is good. I'm just, I'm laughing because this is so off script. It's so fun to watch. But man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, man, it's so funny. This guy has done this so many times to others, and he's just like, screw it. I'm not even going to play there. Dude, that's awesome. And, okay, in all fairness, they killed Gunner after he TP back to lane. Yeah. So the Visage's game is now atrocious. So effectively, you've now traded away a bad mid lane for an awful off lane, and you've brought Skitter into a position in the game where he's winning the lane he was supposed to lose. Yes. I mean, that's, now, a, that's a big plus win. Plus Amar. Flies dead. The problem is that you do still have an Earth Spirit that, you know, is level four at this point and now dying to Gunner and Gunner gives him the tip back. <laughs> DX. <laughs> oh, you must stand down. Oh, Gunner stand down. They're all going down. Uh, copy goes top and kills Amar. All right, let's all take a moment just to think about what happens. PC lag. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things happening. Um, oh my god, Snaking is 3-0 and 3. He is mega farmed. I I don't even know how where I to begin. Genuinely, the thing that's so awesome about this is that the, this is really high skill Dota. Yeah. But this could also have been a 14,000 MMR pub. Yes. Genuinely. True. Like, everything that's happening here is just... We're just doing new shit, you know? Yeah. The, the traditional way is not going to work here, so I'm just going to get out there and get something done including the all chat yeah <laughs> like it's, the whole it's thing it could have been a pub, pub. absolutely um earth spirit is level four and a half huskar is level six and a half so he's two levels behind on mid but the trade-off is sf's almost level five visage is just cracked level four they did die and on the bristle amar is a full level ahead of the luna despite dying because he did get the kill first right, right. so um yeah what what a what a start to the game. I want to say advantage Falcons overall because they were Really? Yeah, because they were expected to lose this, right? Well, the, they were expected the to lose No, the lane. Oh, okay, got they it. They were expected to lose mid, which they still did. Yes. But they were also expected to lose bottom. All right. Right? The Visage plus Tusk, they got the first blood on the Shadow Fiend. This is the type of lane you can snowball really hard, no pun intended with these two heroes. And the rotations from Malreen have effectively solved a lane they were meant to lose, so now they only lost the one. Right. And at the, in the meantime, Amar is also winning top. So, again, you go in with certain expectations of what's going to happen. I feel like Falcons have already, in these first six minutes, solved some serious problems that the draft was presenting to them. And now it's just a matter of can they control the Huskar? Well, so the other question with this that I have for you is, okay, they've solved the problem of, like, how bad the lanes were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. The Huskar, is that solvable with what they have? Given the heroes that are there, do they do they have, or are they going to have the tools to deal with this armlet Huskar? Because that's kind of the new problem that they're going to have to right. deal with very soon. Uh, I think Bristleback is an interesting matchup in that regard. When he, if, I mean, when he has the armlet, you're not ready. Yeah. But when Bristle gets eggs, he has really okay. high physical burst against Huskar, which makes for a very interesting matchup. And ultimately, Huskar counteracts it with eggs of his own. Because yeah. then you're taunting the Bristle and forcing him to face you. Um, you also have one of the hardest physical damage right clickers in the game in the Shadow Fiend. So I do think Falcons have the tools. I think the, the immediate phase when the armlet comes out is going to be a bit awkward. But if they can weather the storm and survive for like five to ten minutes, maybe Copy gets one Roche but doesn't really take over the game. I, I don't think this is a good late game for Huskar. I, I feel like Nouns are a little bit committed in that regard, but yeah, the, I, I see the solutions. There's also the Hoodwink, right. an X-Factor against Huskar too to have that break. 
Likewise, snowball saves are going to be there later on. I'm also seeing these stacks being made over on the Radiant Ancients. So that is going to be like a nice little tool to help uh, build up the farm into Amar eventually. Because he's definitely going to need it. Um, yeah, uh, just a very strange start to this game. 11 kills in five and a half minutes. If there was any doubts about last game, and <laughs> yes, last night, are you okay? Yeah, you just made me realize this is like the same amount of kills yes. that <laughs> yesterday's game one had after like 35 minutes. <laughs> and yeah, oh well. Nouns, I mean, uh, they were saying it on the panel, it better not play slow. They haven't, but Falcons have been faster. And Falcons have more kills. Yep, they do. They're rolling around. How many deaths does Gunner have at this point? Three. He's yeah. one, three, and one. It's been a bit of a tough one. It's level four. They have a big streak going, too, for the Naga Siren. I feel like if they can find a way to kill Snake King, it's going to be a nice little pinata of gold uh, for these Nouns heroes later on. And I, I know, so... Generally speaking, when you're playing Visage offlane, I feel like the most popular build right now is to go 2 4 zero, 1 right? You get okay. max soul, soul assumption and 2 in the Grave Chill. I wonder with how this game is playing out, if Gunner actually made a mistake getting the second point in Grave Chill instead of a point in Cloak. Because oh. if you're going to start doing these like mega dives on him with three heroes, the, the even one point in Cloak actually makes a massive difference when it comes to these big nukes like Shadow Raises, uh, Earth Spirit Kicks and maybe you can get a turn on play. I feel like it's way more impactful than an extra little value on the grave chill, but this this is the standard. So it's not like he's doing something weird by going the normal build, but sometimes you got to get a little creative as, as we've already seen from the side of Falcons. They've been plenty creative in this game already. Oh yeah. Um, we'll see. Gunner is going mid. Okay. And he will meet Amar there. The classic Fly. off lane versus off lane mid minute six. Maureen is chasing around Fly with Snake King here as they are pressuring this tier one tower in the bottom lane with a catapult. There needs to be some type of a reaction to this if they want to keep their tower alive. But yeah, Amar now in a matchup against Visage. Okay. He Perfect. is, uh, yeah, the Visage is pretty out leveled here. If Gunner uses his Grave Chill poorly, the Bristle can just dive him in the tower. Dude, this tower so. is dead at seven minutes. Yep. Tier one gone. <laughs> Malreen's still <laughs> just laning here. I mean, he's going to get so the Wisdom Rune. Wait a minute. They, they need to oh, come yeah. and if defend he gets that, against That's this. actually huge. This is very important for Nouns to protect. They're going to bring heroes, but they got to. I mean, it's not easy. Okay, Cog's down. It's a weird one. Fly steps off uh, to the side. He's wisdom. here. Can he get it in time? He oh, got it. Valry got the wisdom. Oh, that's so big. Oh, man. And Snake and Snake King. Ooh, burn wow. it down, but alive. Another best case scenario for Falcons. I can't believe that. What happened to the other wisdom room? Crick got the other yeah, one. So they got double wisdom. Oh, despite man. Nouns bringing four heroes, Malreen manages to outclick Fly on the rune right before he dies. And he will be licking his wounds in the mid lane level five now. I mean, this is this is a weird game, and I, I feel like now you're really in a scenario where like it's Huskar versus the world, because all the rest of his team is so low level right now that they, they can't really even get involved, it feels like. You know what? Wait. What I up? think Malreen might have made a mistake using the wisdom rune when he picked it up. Because I think he might have got experience from the other one if he didn't. Oh, yeah. Because I think by using the one he just picked up, he overleveled Snaking. And if he hadn't, he might have got experience from the one Crit picked up, and then he could have used the one he bottled and been level 6. I mean, I say mistake. The experience just goes to another teammate, right? But you could have maybe had a level 6.5 Earth Spirit right now. It's that still good to have the support levels, of course, but it's, it's just an interesting situation. I mean, yeah, that could have potentially been a kill on the copy in the mid lane with Magnetize. I mean, maybe not, because you still have, like, light Yuma? break that you need to deal with. And right, Yuma they're not kidding. They're just zoning him off. Dodge away from that one. Maureen, very close to level six. They spot him. Copy the amp damage and the armlet ready to go, but won't be able to do anything else. And now Maureen gets level six. He's online and fairly recovered. All right, it's time to test your Dota Plus knowledge. Okay, what up? What do you think the projection is of this game right now? Win rate. Um, if you had to guess. I think nouns at like 60%. Okay. Let's bring it up. 
Oh my god. Falcon <laughs> 72? <laughs> 72? I'm not saying blindly trust the graph, but this one was wild to me. We've seen games that are like 30 minutes in where one team has a 20k gold lead, and it's like this type of expectancy. Oh, It's man. actually crazy. But these stack seals... Yeah, it's big. I mean, this could start to turn things a little bit. I, I don't think we've had a game this lopsided in the prediction at this point in time. And it, again, we've, we've talked about this in a previous cast we did yesterday. I don't exactly know how they do the win expectancy, and I feel like it's changed over the last couple of months, but this one just stands out because it's that one-sided. It's actually kind of crazy to see. We'll see if uh, if Gabe knows what's up. The other Gabe, of course. Not me. As we've already established, you never make mistakes, but maybe this graph will. That's true. Well, is it really a mistake if they give you a percentage to win? If it was 0%, that's the only way that they could make a mistake. I've won a 0% game. Oh, well then, yeah, there's a it's mistake. It's rounded down. Okay, got it. It was probably 0.1. It was quite the most ridiculous comeback I've ever had. It doesn't happen very often. Nah, that's fair. But that's why you don't give up, game, because that Never one time up. it happens. Never surrender. Like Amar, who is not giving up on getting his Aghanim Scepter. As he gets closer to it, Yuma, Mask of Madness delivered, trying to farm through some agents as well. But yeah, I mean, they, they've weathered the initial storm. Now it's just a matter of, is this going to be uh, a game where Copy can have the crazy type of influence you want to see? You've got birds on Gunner now. Yeah. I mean, it, th this is ideally the phase of the game where now, if things went <laughs> according to plan, uh, I think they would want to turn up the aggression, use the Huskar armlet, use the Visage birds, try to take bot tier one tower, try to start you know, aggressing, getting the Roche during daytime as Radiant on the Radiant side, but with everything that's happened, I feel like Nouns probably don't feel comfortable making the oh, quote-unquote no. standard moves. Are they going to sit back and farm Sins? I think it looks oh, no. like don't, they are. Don't entertain the idea. Dude, they are. Look at them. They're, <laughs> they're going. They're farming. It's happening. It, they might be waiting for sixes on support since they got no Wisdoms. It, it is really... They're quite hamstrung on Lelis and Fly from that exchange that happened there. So maybe with these sixes, they feel a little more confident. On the flip side, though, Falcons, they're ready to go. They're just going to start pushing Copy's tower mid. Malreen and Crit, both level seven, will force the rotation of Lelis. TPing in and a bit of a weird spot. And Crit, nowhere to go, but Lee never mind. Hit. Jumps over the top. Yep. Easy peasy. And that's definitely... What Falcons want, if they can pull nouns around the map, then sometimes the best defense is a good offense, uh, as Sun Tzu used to say. Yeah. Just uh, just keep pressuring them around so they don't get to group up their Huskar. It's a traditional way of beating the hero, is if you make the moves first, even if he joins the fight and wins even slightly, it doesn't really matter, because he's not accomplishing his goal in the game. I, I am very concerned for Noun's movements around the map, that is for sure. Because Falcons appear to be the ones that are much more free. And Copy sitting here mid, trying to get towards level 12, but importantly, getting towards the BKB. Yeah, maybe that's what they're waiting on. Yeah. Still has to overcome the Song of the Siren. I've seen this the before. Exact same scape. Again, it's Lelis. Because when you have BKB on Huskar, if you go into the fight and Song of the Siren comes out, I think you just get killed. Yeah. Because yeah. Bristle and Shadowfiend can easily overwhelm you. This is a Bristle with a 13-minute Ags. Amar's top net worth. Oh my god. Yeah, he is big from this early laning stage. All right, they, they got to get something All right. here. Yeah, it's go time. Oh, now let's try to accomplish oh something, god, and the move is they're red. Gone. Maybe crit will die. No. Yes. Good shards. Oh, I've seen this before. Yeah, he doesn't have his ult this time, though. Eight, so, no escape seven. plan. Oh, okay. No escape. No escape. They find crit and will kill him. But in towards mid. Yeah, same story again. They are trying to force Nouns to play defensive with this push. Now, there's a 14-minute Wisdom Rune coming up. Gunner? Oh. Okay, Malreen testing out his new skateboard. Lelis forced away, so they will not be able to steal that wisdom. 2,000 gold lead for Falcons. And Nouns... 
Don't tell me Snake and gets this wisdom with Song of the Siren. Dude, he's running for it. They're not. Oh, wait Lelis. a minute. Wait a minute. He doesn't know where Lelis is, so he won't blindly song and walk up. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Lelis got it. Snake is five seconds too late and might even be forced to song. Yep. Song out? That, out. It, Roche. Roche. They, that, like, with song down, I feel like you have to go Roche at this point. Fly is nice going dead. to be hit and brought down yuma gets the magnetize onto him malreen thinking about it gets the magnetize reapplied mask of the madness to run away <laughs> it's not called of the madness but oh copy you gonna reel him in no he's gonna dispel it with the ult i i feel like you you've got to go roche with the huskar and no song magnetize is down too maybe it's too scary into the bristle Ah, it's a tough one. Falcons pressing it forward as Gunner takes the bottom tier one tower. And, you know, I do understand the big part of this from the point of view of Nouns is like, it, if at this point you lose a fight, already feeling like the early game did not go the way you wanted it to, the game just feels over. But honestly, these types of pickoffs over and over again across the map, it just, it, it's feeling pretty rough. Uh oh, Gunner. Skinner comes in. Oh, TP Requiem. Immediately there. Resummon on the birds. Gonna try and stomp to get out of there, but Snake King on the chase. He TP finds a good tree available. line here. This is. Oh, Snake King will find He's it, good. but he can't get them with the net. The birds, though, do they die? I do not see them. So, yep, they killed the birds. That was a resummon. Okay, BKB Husk. Naga has a solar crust? Holy! She's farmed. I mean, I know he got three kills in lane, but he also has 60 CS minutes, 16 on snaking, just beefing it up here. This is a very early solar, and that is an awesome item against the Huskar for the Shadow Fiend to have. Just put it on the SF, protect him, give him way more damage. The Bristle doesn't really need it. He can do without it, no problem, so. Yeah. This game is looking very, very good for the side of Falcons right now. And as you've said a couple of times, I agree. Nouns, you've got to get started on something. And it will be the Roche. And I, I don't think Falcons are interested in contesting this. I think this is kind of just the way of the game that Nouns will get the first one. Well, but maybe never mind. Okay. I mean, if they contest this one and win this fight, it's just. They're moving in. Roche. Oh very, my God. very low. Crit is there. Fly in trouble. And Copy, maybe just needing to TP out at this point, is going to go for it and manages okay. to escape. That's a good, good disengage. And the fact that they did that with only two allows Gunner to push out mid and start putting a little bit of pressure here. Signs of life for Nouns. Yeah, Yuma is also farming quite a lot. We've talked about the Bristle and the Shadow Fiend getting stuff, but Yuma is staying on track with the Luna. Yeah. With Aegis in hand. I... Usually Huskar wants to take at least tier one mid and then maybe tier two bot. I can't say with confidence that he's going to do it and that it's a good idea, but th the tier one mid, absolutely. Okay, they just want to fight. I think this is maybe an unexpected move here from Falcons because they're just expecting Copy to go down mid, but Skitter is potentially reading it. No, never mind. He walks back into Yuma the war. Underneath the tier two tower, they find and kill him, but this kill on the Skitter would be very big as well. Will die to the Huskar. So they trade carry for carry. Gunner. Might be the one left behind here, although Amar is going in very deep for this one with Maureen somewhat low and the rest of the team moving Sick in. Gunner, jukes. very good on these jukes. Lelis off to the side, does have a snowball if they want to get in there and help him out, but he's not going to be able to. And Lelis just in trouble now. Uh oh. On to illusions and the rest of the team did not Help get the friend ammo. syndrome. That could have been a dead visage, but they give them a tusk as well for free. The old two for one. But in the end, Falcons get the better of that engagement for sure, just the double deaths. But then it was a carry for carry trade. Just how rapidly things can do down and did have the blink dagger, but 
Maybe a little bit of miscommunication with the team on if they wanted to go in or not. Yeah, they were a bit far coming from the south. If you want to take these fights, I can understand it, but Huskar has to be close by when you're starting to cast your offensive spells or it's all for naught. The rest of the lineup just isn't strong enough to contest, in particular, the Bristleback. Amar is going to have Bloodstone in like three minutes. Do they have any items against it? So Tusk did not go veil, uh, Vessel. Also... They have no anti-healing. Yeah, Mind Gunner... Up. Gunner is going AC and... Tuskar already has a plate mail. I like that choice. I think it's the right read on the game that you have to get a casual plate mail here. You can choose to get Satanic next, or you can choose to upgrade the plate mail to AC, but, but armor is necessary. But they already have AC on Gunner working on it. Yeah, okay. So then, I mean, obviously don't do two. Okay. But I think the plate mill is still a good choice, even if he's not upgrading it. Uh, he, he needs armor badly against the Bristle plus uh, Shadow Fiend, so... Right. This is still the most cost-efficient slot that he can realistically give up. In order to get that. 14 to 7. And Tormentor at 20 minutes going to be taken. Crit, how has the Boomerang... Another nice tool against Huskar. Oh, is Damage he going to this? He's there very early. Yeah. He's 40 seconds early to the Wisdom, just chilling out here in the jungle. Does not have Scurry, so if they find him, he's probably dead. But they're on the other angle, and I think Crit might just get this one. Although, Luna's he can, heading over. Yeah, it's, it should be pretty safe against Yuma to get it. Can just... Acorn Bushwhack. Yuma needs to Manta Dodge the Bushwhack to get this Wisdom. Waiting for it. Spots crit there and... Oh! And he gets Scurry from the level up. But Still gonna die though. Yeah. Probably. Oh! Gets to yeah. the far side but the Snowball was there. They bring a lot of heroes for it. But the Tormentor is here so feels like a worthwhile rotation. Another miss Wisdom though. Feeling a little bit unfortunate with that one, but as you said, Tormentor. Now Lelis has the shard. And Bloodstone just about completed for Amar. I don't know how they kill this guy, actually. Yeah. I'm looking at their lineup. I just, I don't see it until Huskar has Axe, but he's not planning for it. I mean, Incendiary is a lot of damage. You're doing percentage-based damage. Um, it's, it's... I mean, I guess if he gets to hit him, like... I don't know, 15 times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're right. Thank you. I'm always bad. Always looking for the best case scenario here. Yeah. It's the worst side of towns with their nice NA draft. 14 to 8 and. Taking the punch stun duration here is Lelis. I thought maybe in this game he would take tag team uh, damage after maxing out tag team to really try to amp that up as it does seem to be the name of the game here is can nouns kill the radiant team right i mean i i will just say that this draft screams aggressive to me from nouns the play has not yeah well let's gonna break the smoke here and will not blink though they find him the silence so is, is there and rooted dead now fly he has to run away too, Amar. Amar. <laughs> Amar. Amar. <laughs> he said the other day he wanted to do it for the team. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Just trying to force a rotation. I mean, it looks funny, but I actually think that was the the mindset there was trying to get nouns back to their base. They don't the fall for it though. The other day he said he wanted to do that type of stuff for the viewers. Yeah. You've got a laugh out of me. Listen, you see red, that's just what happens. Yep. It's the only place you can go. Maybe they change seeing red to be like troll ult, but instead of hitting the nearest target, you run in a straight line toward the enemy fountain. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. Backwards. <laughs> Backwards at the fountain. All right, AC done. Okay. Smoke time. That's a big item. Mouse. Now, unfortunately, this timing doesn't line up perfectly with Copy getting Satanic. He's missing the Claymore. 
but they really want to again try to get something done here. Ooh, and a fourth staff done for. Oh my God, Lois catches nobody in the shards. This is very awkward. And now they are running away. And now a lot of stacks up of the quills. Copy. He gets caught. Copy. Copy's dead. Cinderin. This is not the way they wanted it to go. The snowball into the fear and now beaten down. Oh, now. I think they're getting raxed. Yeah, they, they, that is. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, God. The Huskar Masters will tip what they consider to be a pitiful Huskar performance. My goodness. And okay. now, All right. finding Gun Amar, there's no yeah. reason to stop. I mean, honestly, they're ready to go for more. Gunner's birds are dead, too. That's a tier three tower done. I'm half expecting them to go for the tier fours here. Dare I say, Gaben never wrong. Well, they called it very early on. You yeah, know? That's just a lane. When is Roche? 130. Okay. BKB on the Earth Spirit. I mean, this this is a this is a tough situation for Nouns to be in right now. Cinderin. Yeah, sure I agree. You, uh, you agree with that or not? But losing losing at every stage of the game does make it quite difficult. I mean, we like their draft. Uh, that was a stage of the game. Did we? Oh, okay. Roche, minute away from respawning. You said it was an NA draft. That can be... That's true. Depending on the on the beholder, that can be considered very bad or very good. I mean, I, I, thought, I thought the Huskar made a lot of sense when they picked it, but the way that Falcons played around it, I think it's just flat-out genius, actually. I, I'm, I'm oh. really impressed oh. with how they chose to solve the problems early on, and that's, that's what Huskar is all about is solving the first 15 minutes, and they did an excellent job. And because of that, it's not just that Falcons do well, it's that Nouns, you know, you, you've you played this type of game before, right? Yeah. Where, okay, this is how Husker's gonna do, this is step one, step two, step three. You can throw out all of the books of what you've studied, and now it needs to be intuition. And unfortunately, in this tournament so far, it seemed to me that when things go a little bit off the rails, Nouns' intuition is, not exactly aggression and speed. They get the silence out though on the Malreen. They oh have my oh God. that BKB oh, needs to come a little God. earlier. And Amar is just gonna stand there. Yuma tries to get to his front side. Unfortunately, the back side looks a lot scarier as they are gonna find the magnetized reapply. Gunner is dead. Malreen runs in from downtown. Catches fly here too. Roll, roll, roll your boat. And catch the clock. Lellis. Oh, Amar. Oh, Amar. Yeah, did a sort of dangerous movement right there. And the roll in does not manage to connect. Amar. Amar. <laughs> Come on now, buddy. All right, they're coming on back and hitting those tier four towers. Okay. And with that, seeing red, GG is called 27 minutes. The perfect response from Falcons. That's honestly, this game was. Beautiful. This was a masterclass. I am super impressed with everything Falcons did in this game. The adjustments that they made, it, it all comes from the first five minutes, right? So Malreen is losing mid, he rotates bottom, gets himself and his team three kills down there. Then they put the Hoodwink mid for a little bit. Then they put the Bristleback mid for a little bit. They just move their pieces around beautifully to solve all the problems very quickly. And Huskar draft lost in like 25 minutes. It's an impressive performance, and it can only come from people that know that hero very well. Nouns going to have to go back to the drawing board, see if they can cook something up in game number two. For now, we're going to head back to the panel. Thank you very much, uh, Lyrical and Cinderin. Yeah, that game did not play out the way Nouns wanted it to, but credit for that goes to none other than Malreen, I think. Yeah, as the Grandmaster Huskar. He knew what he was up against. Uh, we heard it already from the coach as well. I would imagine the same talks were happening on Falcons. It's like, Marlene, would you rather want to, would you rather want to face an Earth Shaker or a Huskar? He knew it was most likely going to be the Huskar when he banned the other one. And 
He dealt with it very well, P. I mean, it was a beautiful game from Falcons. You know, Cinder and Sega ends the cup as well. The fact that you're against a Husker in the mid lane, who then kind of just ditch it, you get some early levels, then you kill Gunner on the village. Like, Husker games are built around dumpstering mid and leaning on a core to play on. Luna is not that core to lean on. Luna doesn't break open the game at 10 minutes. She wants to farm a little bit longer. So then when you look at the real concepts that now they're bringing, if Visage does not have a game, it doesn't matter if Tusker has free farm, because all he can do is continue farming. Yep. No, like, Tusk and Clock aren't going to suddenly tr like triple smoke with a Huskar and fight four or five heroes by, you know, alone. It's like Their draft was yeah. very straightforward, like yeah. one, one dimensional. They needed to do well in the lanes, take that advantage from the lanes and go for one tower after another, walk around the map like, I don't know, some circus crew, whatever. Unfortunately for them, it didn't work out that way. Not only did they uh, get kind of crushed on that Visage lane, mm -hmm. good rotations, double killing the Visage, also stealing the Wisdom room. Yeah. And then the only rotation that they kind of were making would usually connect on crit. And crit would even escape the Ice Shards with his ulti most of the time. So they couldn't find a bristle back to slow him down. Like overall from Falcons, this was, I feel like they were just it was, it, look, it was like amazing. At the same time, if Malwin's rotation on the Visage under the tower fail, their game is done. Mm -hmm. So it was really high risk, but it paid out like uh, in a really big fashion. Yeah, just felt like Falcons, they knew exactly what they wanted to do. You know, you were already mentioning, you know, crit surviving some of the early ganks, Amar free farming the triangle as well. It's like, Everyone in Falcons like, okay, cool guys, we know what we're gonna do. Sure, Shadow Fiend dies to like, the odd rotation, but always when someone dies, Falcons were off hunting on the other side of the map. It was a, a real nice balance between you know, conceding a little bit of map, but then always trying to mirror that and punish it. And again, Falcons, I think they have stepped up immensely from some of the previous games where they looked a bit shaky. This was proof that they are back in some very good form. Yeah, and I think the, the main thing here, as I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone that Malreen is our standout player for this first game of the series. I think the main thing that stands out to me with this series compared to the games we saw from both of these teams before is the tempo because we saw that Nouns were setting definitely a higher tempo than what we saw from them yesterday. Not hard to do anyway. But Falcons was just every time a step ahead, Blizzard. Like, Th without fail. Uh, they were, but this is something you truly do not see in pubs even, yet alone in pro games, right? Like, usually you see some uh, lane shenanigans, you try to go behind the tier one, which he did, he got some creep waves. I think it was also, in like, as he was pulling the wave, the bounty rune spawned, he takes the bounty rune, he heals up the mana, and then he ganks the off lane as well. So it was a perfect storm for this Earth Grid. It really was, especially uh, when we <laughs> look at the 10 minute timer for these two heroes. It's uh, quite the difference. Yeah, I mean, the five assists is the key thing here, right? Maureen able to make moves in that, like we previously mentioned. And for Copy, again, like, he had complete free farm. The CS was, what, 30, 40 plus the 9, 60, 70 plus CS. Like, it was a complete free time for him, but he also just didn't really take the mid tower, if I remember correctly. Around minute eight or nine, the mid tower was still alive. Normally in Huskar matchups, you bully the mid and take tower, but that unfortunately didn't happen. Yeah, okay, that's minute three, by the way. That's minute three with the Earth Spirits rotating in, killing them off, like he killed them off before as well. Like that, that's just ridiculous. The question is, where do you go from here? Because we know that Falcons preferred second pick, the both mm -hmm. of these teams mm -hmm. do. Leaning in. Uh, I'm leading in, you know why, because... You don't want to hear the idea, or what, what is it? No. Yeah, 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 so yeah, we need to... Hush, hush. So now, so far, they've been picking... Uh, they've been winning series off some cheese picks, right? Mm. Like, they've had some Meeples, they've had some Tinkers, and today as well, a Huskar. Yeah. Falcons, they just broke that. Like, yes. we're, we're gonna give you the last pick, and we don't care about it. So, uh, yeah, I think now are in for a treat in the second game as well. They need to completely reset, go for standard, normal Dota versus Falcons. Yeah, it did seem like uh, the side of Falcons was having a lot of fun during that game. You know, Malreen's like, enjoy your mid lane. <laughs> I'll be over here on the bot lane. You know, the, the, yep. the spirits were high and I hope that the comms are gonna be uh, telling that same story. <laughs> I what's going on. I told you what's gonna happen. Okay, Gwu, uh, quick map. <laughs> How much is this minus on you? Too many. It's That's all you need to know. Push in the wave and it's I think 17, we, just, no? we dive whoever keeps. Save with Avis.
Reserve your next car with Avis on Amazon and save off base rates. And receive an Amazon gift card. Visit Amazon.com slash Avis to learn more. Taxes, fees, and optional products are not included. Blackout these apply. Subject to availability. Oreo and Coca-Cola just became besties. Taste the new limited editions while they last. Your gut is like a garden, growing both good bacteria and bad. That balance is key to a healthy gut environment. Benefiber's plant-based prebiotic fiber gently nourishes the good bacteria, working with your body to help your gut and you flourish effortlessly every day. Grow what feels good with Benefiber. For over 40 years, Life Extension has been helping people like you to find their healthy balance of exercise, nutrition, and mindset. Why do we do it? To help everyone live a longer, healthier life. Whether we're exploring new scientific research or procuring the finest raw ingredients, we do it all to create the best nutritional supplements science can offer. You've got goals, we'll help you achieve them. Get the balance you need for a healthier life with Life Extension. Most deodorants just do armpits. Dove does more. Meet Dove Whole Body Deo for thighs, shoulders, knees, and those. Try new Dove Whole Body Deodorant. Oh no, is this like an in the pool pool party? Can't get in there. I need food. Can't swim while I'm eating. Genius. Tiny bites, the chip will keep you dry. That felt mean and intentional. From the dawn of time, there were two things, the universe and Tyson chicken. Next time you wonder which came first, it's not the chicken or the egg, it's always been Tyson. Do you really want to go through with this? Absolutely. You've always stood up for what you believed in, but this? What could mean more than this? So, Mom, what do you think? They like it in creeps, I don't know. Apparently so, apparently so. Some, uh, some strange people out there uh, at some percent, and uh, that's going to do it. So, uh, overall, I think um, you had quite a few uh, similar answers to the public in some regards, but uh, you're also very good at reading the public as well. That's true. It's not hard. It's not hard. Simple people, simple minds, easy for noob. Alrighty, thank you very much for playing. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, best of luck at the event. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. You are in the upper bracket semifinals here of PGL Wallachia, the second of two upper bracket semifinals. We already have Heroic securing a place in the upper bracket finals and thus also securing top three. And at the moment, Falcons is on the right track to join Heroic because they are one game up in this best of three against Nouns. We'll see if Nouns can bounce back. Definitely looked a little rough in game one, but that also might be just because one cornerstone of the draft, Blizzard, was just crumbled and then the whole house fell apart yeah the cornerstone uh, crumbled and the american draft didn't work out in the end <laughs> uh, the quote from lyrical the by the way of course yeah, the yeah. true american draft well <laughs> they're in eastern europe maybe should be adopting some heroes from around here they did try that by the way with the huskar like you guys mentioned it the huskar is one of most played heroes on malween 
The problem is, if you're snatching his best heroes, he knows all the answers. And you could hear that in that listen mm -hmm. little, little listening. Trust me, guys, I know what's gonna happen. Didn't I tell you this was gonna happen? So. Yeah. Yeah, they pre-planned this very nicely on Falcons. Yeah, they seemed uh, they seemed pretty pretty chuffed with themselves, to be honest. And uh, with those uh, with a game like that, you you can't not be. It felt it felt like they were just outclassing nouns in game one of this series. But we also know nouns as a team that does come back from series teak up. So I don't think that they'll be going out without a fight here. No, for sure. And I think nouns might even look to identify we've been talking about mid lane and stuff but i think maybe the off lane uh, might need to step up a little bit more for nouns you know when gunner and lela are able to pack a bit more of a punch in the early game mm -hmm. that's when copy has someone to play with and you know picking a melee four and then having you know visage sure this was a rare scenario where they're, off they're able to offset that but you know in other lanes they had the same problems but i want to see the return of like the snap fire the hoodwink for lela then pair it with a mars or a primal or essential for gunner and that lane will naturally play itself out but you won't have these potentially there, there volatile nothing scenarios. natural about that last game <laughs> i know i know i don't know i mean there were a couple of things that uh, that we can pick apart at the start of course everything came down at the end of the day to, to the huskar and their spirit unfortunately yeah but um, i do want to say mm -hmm. they got the bristle back on the side of falcons and even though we, we pray Malreen a lot, I think Amar had a great game on his Bristleback and it, it, it would be very spooky to give him that he again. He had an okay game. The he reason did. why it wasn't great is that he didn't continue that dive on the clockwork in behind the tier falls. Thus, only an I okay will game. say that for Amar, that is spectacular <laughs> restraints. <laughs> mm, you, you're saying he's improved and matured over the years? Potentially, yes. Potentially, so. He had an okay game, and what's crazy is he was on top of the network charts for the majority of the time. And the reason was very simple. No one else was laning. There was <laughs> a, li a little Fair. circus <laughs> happening go across the map. People were chasing one another, and he was the only one actually... Yeah, Yuma was there as well, but he was the one really hitting creeps and uh, taking ancient stacks, so he had an amazing game. Yeah, I, I was surprised when it uh, got through same like Tiga. Mm -hmm. You kind of expect it to be bad. It is impressive though for now, because I think they've had some of the most soul-destroying losses of any team. And it's back-to-back -back days. Like yesterday, mm. their loss against Davos game one. Some teams would have never been able to even muster a comeback, right? Yeah, that's true. And now game one against Falcons, you could argue it's like the same level of like they built up a strategy and they never got to play it because of just like a, a complete outplay. So I am hoping for now's sake that they, you know, they've clearly shown that they can bounce back from devastating losses and they're going to have to identify a new way to deal with Falcons because their approach of trying to give copy last pick in the draft did not work out. Honestly, not. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing game number two being more competitive at the same time listening to lyrical and syndrome and just losing their uh, minds casting is also very enjoyable it is very enjoyable uh, i will also say that the games that nouns won yesterday both of the games in the series that they won they were second pick uh, by design this game uh, oh and in game one they were also second pick by design this mm -hmm. game falcons had priority and they chose second pick so we'll see how nouns fares with first pick this time around we do have a very uh, different ban scenario coming out here at the moment with shadow demon being banned and enchantress we have some supports banned i mm -hmm. know shadow demon was banned last time as well but uh, but eng wasn't in this phase i feel like team falcons are just eliminating the heroes that are really good openers at the moment mm -hmm. for for the first phase both the shadow demon and enchantress leaving everything absolutely open Ooh, even the storm man. yeah the yeah. respect they did it last game as well mm -hmm. actually. yeah well the thing is, if they, like, for now, right now, the top heroes would be Snapfire or Bristleback to open their draft with. They've done it a couple times before, but like I said, I think Snapfire is a good way to get through the draft against Falcons and not feel like you're losing too much. Nice ban from Falcons, of course, to Beastmaster, but yeah, I think Snap and Bristle are the, the key openings here for now. Snap, Bristle, Fly Naga as well in the pool. Maybe they didn't impress the last time they played it, but might be an option because if yeah. you do not pick it up team falcons just might they oh, banned they banned it out it. yeah okay mm -hmm. so they get the clock the okay. one yeah. last remaining also fair i think uh going on the naga topic they didn't really play that strong of a naga game mm -hmm. and also earlier in the tournament they were banning it against themselves on first pick so they tried it once didn't work out they're back to banning it no matter if they're first or second pick mm -hmm. Fair enough. Might as well, yeah. Yep. 
the hero isn't necessarily always the easiest to execute with. Oh, good team smiles around now in the yeah. top. This got banned out, by the way, in the, in the last game, but Skitter yep. will most likely get to enjoy it this time around. I feel like their other carries are just as strong, or maybe even stronger, than the Prophet. But they just value what the hero brings to the game, and that's a lot of, of course, global potential. And it makes the game a little bit easier to carry from the off lane or the mid lane. Yeah, and uh, there is still some flex. We haven't seen Falcons use it. But we know that Malreen has practiced a lot with an H-Prophet mid yeah. in his pub, so they probably won't use it, but it's always there if needs be. The thing is that when you have Falcons picking up Nature's Prophet, this is a hero that they've played before. This is a mm -hmm. hero that we've seen Liquid play every single game in the Grand Finals on the carry position as well. So you would imagine that teams should have thought about and have thought about how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And already they are by respecting the off lanes that enable the native profit. Profit loves joining fights that are already set up. You want to be the additional damage, especially as native profit carry nowadays are going for me on it. The change up, of course, with Gladiator getting nerfed. You're not providing that own your own lockdown. You need someone else to do it for you. Yes, you have Sprout, but you know people can get out of that relatively easily in the mid game. And the Mjolnir tech, you put it onto a Treant that pushes out a wave even quicker, so you're able to join more fights. You know, keep the map even more pressured. So uh, yeah. Um, spanning up Mars. The last time Falcon did it, they had a Kunker in the off lane. I don't know if they're gonna ban Kunker here, but just need to respect the the off lane being a bit more team fight orientated due to yep. the profit. Well, one's out with the Mars. We'll see what that which other one. Nouns will focus with this one. Well, Bristle that was picked in the last game is still in the pool. Yeah. Right. Like we have the Bristle left. We have something like a Razor as well left. If you want to combo the Razor Prophet into heroes that if you pick up early on early enough you can't really tell where they're going so not I really picked that much, right like Razor overall they I know Falcons picked it once and they also played it actually now that I'm looking at the notes they played it with the Prophet as well mm -hmm. so that was the exact duo that they had before and it did not work out because they had farming yeah. mid farming carry yeah it was a weird draft but that's right new day and they banned the Monkey King okay does that tell us anything in regards to where Nouns is going with this? Or is this also against the Prophet? It feels like they're setting up for potentially covering the melee mids, right? Like if they want to go for a Shaker, yeah. Shaker can farm against Monkey King, it's fine. But the map play is quicker for Monkey King, so then that's when the matchup kind of drags apart a little bit. And it's one of the only mid lanes that even pressures him a little bit. Like usually Shaker is the one pressuring, so not too terrible of a ban and also a good idea i do believe this might be a shaker for now they also have this clock i wouldn't mind seeing an sf for them as well there's a lot of carries that are really decent with the clockwork at the moment left in the pool there are indeed we'll see if falcons opts to ban out one of the cores that clockwork can be played with or something else which they do a primal beast that is of course good against that nature prophet and they uh, pick up the bat rider themselves and this is once again a flex surprise it is i expect it to be a position four though right like yes most likely but if Malreen sees a good bat game he mm -hmm. will try and take it did we have any bat mids? i don't think so maybe i think we have one maybe one game yeah overall the hero does just way more in my opinion from uh, that support position oh. No, we did have a back mid game because the uh, alliance put it on mobile, but then they shoved him in the ca safe lane. So we've actually had yeah, a yeah. we had a back carry game technically. Position two from the safe lane, right? <laughs> or or no. sure, carry. <laughs> he went Mjolnir and Witchblade. <laughs> uh, we got a Doom Snapfire coming out for now. Yeah, Doom, another hero that we really don't see very often because he's just banned out constantly. But look at that abysmal win rate, thirty eight percent. Which also might be the reason why they ban banned out the monkey, by the way. Like one of the heroes that True. completely crushes him in the lane. It sounds like it's still a good lane for Nature's Prophet to play into, right? Just constantly right clicking down. Sure. Especially if Falcons can get a, a strong position 5 here for a snaking to continue that kill threat. He played Which Crystal can, Maiden, right? he yeah. can play. I mean, I don't really see Trent, but I mean, if any hero to be a body... I can think about the offlaners now, right, as well. Something like a clockwork. So clockwork on one side, centaur on the other. 
Mm -hmm. Get the stampede in against the game. Maybe an option for them. Agnum in the cart. That's been. Yeah. I like how it Good took solution. like over four tournaments for people to really use cart perfectly. Remember like half a year ago when Centaur bought Ag? He'd have to press the button one time, understand mm -hmm. how to actually, you know, cast it. I it still remember that one uh, thrown defense with the cart, right? And that's where Centaur yeah. kind of first. It was the first pro game with the Agnums, I feel like, even. Where it actually had a gigantic impact. Yeah. We'll, we'll see though where Falcons is gonna take this. They're taking heavily into their bonus time. Yeah, it's kind of the argument of do they want their support to be enabling? I, I you know, you can still technically go for Omni for a repel against Doom. Not too great, but that fire clock is very uh, good to throw into. But you also might want yeah, some stun with the task. Yeah, yeah okay, you might want stun. Um, we're giga braining over here, going in depth, but um, task <laughs> is in the pool. It's still a very good lane with Nature's Prophet or some offlaner if you want to combo it that way as well. I would like him to still go Drinking Buddies. I know we've been seeing Tag Team and Drinking Buddies kind of mm -hmm. resurface as a 50-50, mm -hmm. but with the Nature's Prophet, putting the Drinking Buddies onto the, the tree tree end, yep, definitely. because it's a reinforced unit, does more damage to towers, and I think this is a reason for it to, to remain on that facet. And now, who gets sacrificed in the draft? Do they keep the Prophet flex between mid and carry, and then they pick up their offlane here? Or do they just lock in the offlane to give Maureen the last bit that we always are afraid of? Yeah, they'll pick Still in that, the pool. Yep. that personal. This time around, I hope that uh, Nouns find a better solution because last game they didn't have it. What would you consider it to be a solution? And you could still pick Shaker here. I think Shaker's just for like the early game, you get the quick blink, you hunt, you kill Prophet. Sure, there is always going to be that issue of Ags, Bloodstone, Bristol, Shaker does nothing, but... There's maybe an argument for a Void Spirit as well. Yeah. Turn that Bristol back around. Also hero that jumps the Nature's Prophet a little bit easier. But first and foremost... Uh, lock in the late game. Yeah, yeah. we're getting carried away. Yeah, <laughs> this why not? This isn't the answer but, uh, to, to the Bristol back, but this is an answer to Dora itself. Just yeah. Get that ultimate win condition. I mean, now just loves to farm. But if Doom is okay. So Doom is pretty greedy too, right? In the still? depending on the player, it can be very greedy, or it can still be quite map playing if you go for like. We know the player. It's Gunner, Fauzi and Gunner. In his hands. Does Doom go active? Does Doom go slow? I mean, based I on Noun, not Gunner, <laughs> they're only farming so far. Oh at no. Yeah, and I would argue that it's not only about the player, but about the game and how the lane itself goes. Sometimes Doom can be... It can be very active, but only if the lane went well. And still respecting the anti-mage versus Medusa matchup, because the Bristol to off lane, Prophet to mid, mm -hmm. it would look like one really weird draft, right? Like, minimal stun for anti-mage versus Medusa. So. And now, like, of course, Shiva, you're mentioning the greed. That would be a big problem, right? Outside of Doom, there's no real big map play. So Cocky has to find a hero that can mm, tie everything it. together. No if, pressure. Because if the snap and clock doesn't have early levels, then you do need Cocky to bring life to the game. If not, then how do you stop Bristol farming the triangle? How do you stop Profit getting... And they don't even have overall last pick. Yeah, it would be spooky. Very yeah. spooky. I feel like if you are to keep it a bit simple, like the one that you called for before in a form of Earthshaker is solid for me. Another one is Puck. He's still mm -hmm. left in the pool. The thing with Earthshaker, and why I'm afraid of it, for now, is like, it might feel good for the first 15 minutes, but it still hits that hurdle of, oh god, this bristle's too much. And then mm -hmm. eventually you get to like, BKB Ags Daedalus, and you always find the front of him, and you punch him, and it feels good, but... Yeah, and this isn't like a game to cheese in. I don't think this is a neutral game, I don't think this is a... Maybe a thinker game, maybe, but... Even that one is very difficult. Like you have this bat flying around. You and have also there's no, there's no map protection. I don't think you can do that. You need to get like level 12, level 18. And he's too greedy. He's yeah. way too greedy. So you have to defend the tower yeah. without Medusa being there. That's basically the hero that I see for now. Is what they need. Yeah, timber then. Yeah. The way I see it, then maybe a timber. But the only problem is bat learning into you maybe. Mm. Which Why is would they have banned the tiny? About. By the way. They're respecting copy. Again, we're just having active fun. heroes, right? Like the way that nouns feel good is okay. copy oh. being a playmaker. And they go for invoker. I don't know why, but I constantly forget about this hero. Like yeah, he's the one hero that I, is never on my mind. But it's not only if there, there's multiple reasons here. It's not only that they pick it for themselves. They, they're taking it away potentially from 
from Falcons because that TMP into Medusa is also damn scary. Yuma needs to take a page out of Parker's book, right? From the Heroic series. He needs to hit all the creeps in the world, be super scaling because if Doom doesn't have a game support to under level, then it's a lot of control. No, there's drop Hold. Hold. Yeah, yes, it is. It is. Yeah. And because of the Invoker, right? Like yeah. a much better lane. And they also had like three seconds left remaining, I feel like, on that reserve time. So <laughs> they chewed through their time very, very quickly in this game. And with that swap being made, I think this is the first Malreen Nature's Prophet game that we see uh, in his competitive play this week. Yeah, in this tournament, in right? In this tournament, yeah, yeah, yeah. Overall, they have a very aggressive line.